Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I want to uh, share a proposal with you. And that proposal is to uh, put down your chisel and put down your uh, plink.exe and put down your uh, SSH reverse tunnels and consider a new player in town called Legolo NG. Uh, and you know, it's not, not that much of a new player. It's been around for a bit. Um, yeah, it's been around for at least three years. But Legolo NG, if you have not heard of it, um, I have the repo open up here. It is basically uh, the best way to tunnel, uh, especially on the OSCP. So, and what do I mean by tunneling or pivoting? Well, so what I mean by that is, suppose you're doing a uh, penetration test, right? For an Active Directory environment or anything that's like internal to a company's resources, right? Um, you're not gonna be able to access that from your attacker or your Kali machine uh, if you're outside of the network. In a lot of cases on a, pen a real penetration test, uh, you'll be given you know, a machine that's inside of the network, sort of in that demilitarized DMZ zone. So it uh, uh, is, you know, has one foot out into the external and one foot inside so you can actually reach it. Um, and then from that, uh, you know, jump box as they call it, you can then reach the internal network. But the problem therein lies is that how are you supposed to use all of your tools, right? You're, you're, you have all these amazing tools and your your super uh, tricked out Kali uh, installation. Um, you know, how are you going to run something like CrackMap exec on the internal Active Directory environment if uh, you only have this jump box, right? And it's, you know, what if it's a Windows jump box, for example? Well, in that case, you'll need to tunnel your traffic through this jump box and into the internal network. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, there's there's many ways to do this. Um, you can use Chisel, you can use um, plink.exe, um, part of the, the PuTTY tool set. Um, or you can do like a, a, an SSH reverse tunnel if you have access to, if you have credentials and access to SSH, but Legolo NG kind of solves a lot of the shortcomings that come with those methods, like having to manually set up a, a SOX proxy and, uh, you know, prepend all your commands with um, proxy chains, for example. This sort of abstracts all of that from you and basically treats it like a VPN connection, like a, like a ton zero interface that you uh, put on your Kali machine. And then you can just talk to the internal subnet just as if you already have a route to it, right? Because that's what you're actually doing. You're, you're, you're building a route to it. It's going through the agent and the proxy server uh, and basically getting on the internal network. So um, again, yeah, so you, you set up a ton interface, so you, you have no more SOX uh, proxy to deal with. Uh, it's very simple to set up and, uh, you know, look at all these, these these benefits here. It doesn't require high privileges, so as soon as you get access, a foothold uh, just has a low-level user. So I want to go through demonstrating this and actually installing it uh, in an actual, you know, network scenario. So um, what I have here is three VMs. You can see in the top, I'm just using uh, VMware workstation, uh, but you don't need to, if you want to set this up yourself, just grab three VMs, right? I got a Kali VM, I got two Windows VMs. And on MSO2 here, uh, basically just set up with this internal IP address. You can see the, the 10.128.0.1. And uh, on MSO1 here, we actually have two uh, network adapters. It's sort of like dual homed. So it can talk to my Kelly machine on this subnet, but it also has that internal host, right? So it can talk to MSO2. But on my Kelly machine, I can talk to MSO1, but I can't talk to MSO2, right? Because it's on that internal network. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to assume breach on this MSO1, and we're going to set up the the agent, and we're going to set up the server uh, on Kali, and we're going to be able to basically use our tools on MSO2, tunneling through MSO1, if that makes sense. So how do we do that? Let's start this. So like I said, this is going to be like an assume breach scenario. So I'm not going to do some like elite level hacks to get on this box. Um, we're going to pretend that we already gained the foothold. Um, you know, we could think of this as like a client side attack, for example. Maybe we we somehow got a fish and we got a, a malicious file onto the desktop of this computer and unsuspecting user runs it and gives us a shell, right? So let's set that up. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to do here is set up a simple uh, reverse shell payload using MSF Venom. And it's going to connect back to our host here on port 4444. Uh, so now that that's created, uh, we can simply just serve this with a, a simple Python HTTP server. And then over on MSO1, uh, assuming I set up the networking correctly, it's been a while since Network Plus, but uh, we should be able to just paste in that IP if I can grab it again, prepend it with the protocol, and we should get the directory listening. There we go. So you can see our reverse.exe is being served with our Python listener here. Um, so we should be able to just grab uh, the file, right? And I already turned off um, Defender uh, and tested that this should be working. So we just want to make sure we keep that. Uh, smart screen is yelling at us. Uh, yes, keep anyway. And there we go. So we should have it downloaded. And we should have it in our downloads folder. There it is. Perfect. 
Okay, so now that we have it, uh, let's go back to our Kali machine. We can close this, we already downloaded it. And we just need to set up, uh, yeah, a Netcat listener. Again, I'm just using Quad4 as the port because it's a uh, super elite hacker, right? So let's go over to our reverse.exe uh, that we downloaded. And we're going to just simulate like a user, uh, you know, again, like I said, like a client side attack, a user gets this onto their computer. They think it's like, uh, instead of reverse.exe, maybe it's like uh, free Bitcoin dot, you know, exe or something. And they unknowingly uh, or unsuspectingly click on this. And of course, smart screen is going to yell at them. But maybe for some reason uh, they want to run this anyway and hit run anyway. And we go back to our Kali machine. And there we go. You can see we've obtained a foothold finally on the system as the Bill Jones user, right? I run who am I? And if we just run a host name, you can see MSO1, we now have a foothold on this machine. So this is all the prerequisites we need in order to uh, set up uh, Legolo, right? We don't need administrative privileges. We just need a user. Um, so what do we need to do? Well, now that we're at this stage, uh, what we can do is download Legolo, the proxy as well as the server client, and then we can just set up everything and transfer it over. So. We're just going to go back to the repo here and we're going to go under releases. And it looks like there's there's been some new releases since I last used it. Um, and I think just doing some testing uh, a while back, I think they changed some of the syntax. So forgive me if I mess anything up here, but we're just going to download the latest release, which is uh, 0.5.2 at the time of this recording. And what we need to do is download two files, right? We need the uh, server. So we need to show all of this here. Yeah. So the agent, which is going to be like what you install on the client or the victim, that's going to be these agent files here. So we're going to need a Windows one. And then for the actual server host, that's obviously going to be running on our Kali machine, right? So we need uh, this one. Just double check with your architecture and everything. But uh, yes, yeah, so we need this proxy one. So I'm just going to copy the link there and we'll just W get that link. And geez, it's zoomed in, isn't it? Um, okay, perfect. So now we just need to unzip this just like that. And then you can see what it opened up there was just the uh, actual proxy binary that we're going to run, as well as the, the license and the readme, which we can just remove. Okay, so now we have the proxy. Now let's grab our Windows agent, right? So which one do we need? Uh, AMD64 for the architecture I'm running in this simulation. Um, yeah, so it looks like this one. So again, just going to w get that uh, and download it. And then same thing, we just need to unzip. There we go. Perfect. Uh, and again, we can delete license, we can delete readme. We have our agent.exe that's going to be moved over or transferred over to our Windows host. And we have the proxy, which we're going to set up. So uh, let's start up that Python server again, just so we can download the, the file again. And uh, start up a third tab here just to set up the server in a second. So let's transfer this. Again, we're going to assume that we got the foothold here. And now we're going to just use a simple uh, cert util or something to download the file to Bill Jones's downloads folder. OK, so we're just going to put in our IP address again. And I keep forgetting what it is. So let me just copy and paste. And then it's being served as agent.exe. And again, we'll just call it agent.exe. And on our web server here, we got that get request. Perfect. OK, so. We have the agent.exe. We are ready to go on our Windows uh, reverse shell here. And we are ready to go to start the actual uh, proxy server. So let's quickly review the documentation because again, I think they changed some of the syntax since I last used it. But again, it's pretty simple to set up. Okay, so what we need to do first is because we are setting up a, an actual ton interface on our uh, Kelly machine, we need to set up that interface, right? So what I'm gonna do, Okay, so the first command here is basically going to set up, you know, our interface. So sudo ip, you can just copy and paste this, but uh, make sure to fill in your username there. So my username is Kali. Uh, sudo ip, ton tap, add user, Kali, mode, ton, legolo. Okay, you're going to need to put in your, your password because it's a, you know, you need sudo to run it. And now we just need to set that to up, right? Okay, so that's been done. Uh, if we run an if config, we you can see now we have Legolo listed as a secondary interface. So this machine is technically dual home now. We just need to set it up with an actual, uh, you know, subnet, right? Okay, so we're going to scroll down a bit to running Legolo ng proxy server, right? So this is our proxy server. It's going to be running on Kali. So we need to run proxy, and then uh, it says it says auto cert here. That's actually going to automatically request a Let's Encrypt certificate for you. Um, in this case, because we're just, you know, doing this in a lab environment or even on the OSCP, you know, you don't need to actually set up a cert for this. 
Uh, so we're just going to do self-cert. Um, I think it says that somewhere here. Yeah, so just self-cert, that's gonna generate uh, self-signed certificates. And there we go, so we run that, and you can see now that we're listening on all interfaces on this port here, so 11601. This is the port that Legolo uses, so that's a good sign, we're listening now. So now we can switch over to our Windows machine, and we just need to basically connect back to our agent now, right? So let's use the syntax, but uh, in, we're just gonna modify it slightly because uh, this is for Linux, so if we download the Linux agent, but of, of course we're using uh, Windows, so agent.exe, and then we're going to give it the connect, and we're going to give it our IP address again. Then I need to zoom out a bit. Actually, let me just make this full screen now. And then make sure to specify the port, so that 11601. Because we're using that self-signed certificate, we need to provide ignore-cert. So we'll just run that, and you can see we have some output here, uh, just telling us basically the, the certificate validation is not gonna be occurring. But you can see here, this good news, connection established, and you can see the IP address of our Kali machine. Um, so let's go back to here, and you can see agent joined, that's what you wanna see. Uh, we're even getting the host name as well as the user that we have basically run, ran the agent as. So now, yes, we are at this stage, we have the session that is joined, and basically we can just run the session command now, and you can see that we have this session. Uh, and we're just going to provide one because that's the session that we want to enter into or like the session that we want to use, right? Um, so we only have one, so we're just going to hit one there for that one. Okay, so now we need to actually add our route here that we're going to be, uh, you know, proxying to. So what we need to do is get out of this. So we'll just we can close that. And we're going to run this here. So you can see we're going to add this, this route to our route table. And all we need to change is the actual subnet, right? So what we should have done once we got our foothold is do some enumeration, like we should have run IP config, and we would find out that MSO1 is dual homed, and we would get the actual uh, you know, subnet that is connected to in the subnet mask, and we should have taken note of that. Uh, but in this case, we're just simulating this, so assume we, we've done that and we know that it's the internal network is 10.0.0.0, .0 .0 .0, and because it's a class A network, it's gonna be uh, slash eight. And dev Legolo, that's what we're calling it, then we can just run this and again, enter your password. So that should be good. Uh, now if we do route print, I think it is, no. We just run route. Yeah, there we go. So we have our normal, our typical uh, route that's going to you know our, our default gateway, or sorry, up here. And then you can see this Logolo one that we've added and you can see under the interface, we've called it Logolo with the correct subnet mask. Now that that's done, all we need to do is just run start in our sort of Logolo command line interface here. So we hit start. And you can see we have started the tunnel to MSO1 uh, with the user. And if we go back to Windows, um, maybe it doesn't give us a, a prompt there, but you can see we've started that tunnel and we are now um, proxying through uh, MSO1 and we should, in theory now, be able to reach the internal network. So that was it. Uh, it wasn't too bad, just a couple commands you need to know and just write down and have them handy. Um, but, but honestly, overall, that was super simple and now, we have this interface, um, you know, so we don't need to set up any SOX proxies. We don't need to uh, prepend any commands with proxy chains. That's all handled for us, right? It's super, I can't get over how easy this is, right? Once you get it set up, there's a little bit of setup, but once it's done, you know, you're laughing, right? You're you're, you're having a good time now that you, you've got internal to this network. So how can we test this? Well, uh, we have MSO2, which again, we're sort of breaking the, the fourth wall a bit here, but MSO2 has this IP address internally. Um, so let's see if we can like, uh, you know, perform an Nmap scan or something on it, right? So from our Kali host, again, we should not, in theory, we should not be able to connect to this internal host, but we're proxying through MSO1. So, okay, so let's just kick off a simple Nmap scan against that internal host and Let's see what happens. There we go. So we're getting some some ports returned. Um, you can see we have SMB, we have uh, 3389, so we have RDP open, um, RPC. So this looks good. We can reach that internal host. So everything's working as it should. And I should have demonstrated beforehand that we could not previously reach this, all right? So just trust me that <laughs> we've set this up correctly and we're doing some magic right now. We're able to get into that internal network. Okay, so why do we do all this, right? Why did we waste all that time with the setup? Well, now we can run something like netexec or crack map exec um, against that host and, and we should be able to get something back, right? Amazing, there we go. So you can see we have that SMB server up and we are able to reach it through our proxy. Um, so assume we had credentials for a valid user, right? So let's just put username, Bob Jones, and for password, whoops. For password, I think password 
one, two, three should be right. See if we can connect there. There we go. So we're getting that that uh, uh, good sign there that our credentials are correct and we should be able to list out the shares. Yeah, there we go. So uh, you can see here, uh, I know it's a bit CTF-y, a bit, uh, bit fun, uh, but we have a backup share here uh, with read access so we can read what's in here. And I guess to complete our journey here, I will go ahead and see what's inside of this backup folder. Uh, so I'll do that with SMB client and specify the username there. We should be good to go. Uh, the password, one, two, three. Okay, perfect. We should be able to list out the files and we have a password.txt file. Would you look at that? All right, so let's get that. Uh, we should be able to download it locally. There we go. And cat out the passwords file. There we go. We have some sort of credential here that we could add to our growing passwords file as we're attacking this domain. Or maybe, you know, this is the password for a certain web server that's that's MSO2 is also hosting or, you know, these kind of things uh, to just get your mind thinking of, um, you know, why we're tunneling and why we're, uh, you know, why we're doing all this basically. Um, so hopefully that was a fun little uh, uh, demonstration. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. That'd be great. Um, if, you, if, you, if you like the video, please subscribe, as it says here in this password. Um, and other than that, yeah, I uh, thank you for watching and I hope to release some more videos soon. So hope this was helpful.